A group of NGOs has joined forces to address the scourge of human trafficking in South Africa. It comes after a report by the hashtag Traffic You Need to Know campaign, identifying Gauteng as the country's hotspot. Campaign organizers have identified the major recruitment, so-called recruitment areas, as Springs, Benoni, Randburg, Fordsburg, Krugersdorp, Sunnyside, Vereniging, and Van der Bell Park. Tasha de Klerk is from the National Freedom Network and is part of this campaign. She joins us via our video link. Uh, Tasha, good morning. To help us unpack some of these incredibly uh, disturbing findings from this report. And um, the, the one thing that stands out for me is that the report also says human trafficking as high as it is, as high as the incidents are in South Africa and particularly in Gauteng, that it often goes unnoticed. Oh, yes, most definitely. That is the problem that we find with, with human trafficking. Human trafficking is actually a hidden crime. And the reason why we say this is that it is often overshadowed by other crimes. For instance, the drug trade. Um, we, we know that human trafficking is the second largest crime in the world. However, it is the fastest growing crime in the world. Um, we also know that, you know, victims live in fear. And for that reason, they actually try everything in their power to, um, you know, not step um, a foot wrong because of the abuse of the traffickers, for instance. Um, in some cases, we have foreigners that come to our country. They are actually lured into our country in many cases because of fake job offers. And then what is done by the traffickers is um, their identification documents are taken from them. And that already causes so much fear because they are then threatened that they will be reported to the authorities if they do not cooperate. Mm. And then, of course, there is, um, you know, um, threatening their lives, threatening the lives of their loved ones. So there are so many aspects that actually makes this hideous crime a hidden crime. Tersha, uh, the fastest growing criminal industry in the world, also generating more than 250 trillion rand per year. So when we say human trafficking, and you've already touched on it um, with the description around people being given these fake job offers, but what form can it also take? What other forms can it also take? Oh yes, that is very important for us to discuss. Thank you for asking that. So human trafficking takes on so many faces. In most cases, when we talk about human trafficking, the first thing that comes to mind is sex trafficking, labor trafficking, people trapped in containers and shipped over um, borders. Those are cases that most definitely does happen. But when you talk about containers filled with people, I have to say that from our intel on the ground, those are the minority of the cases. So the faces of, of human trafficking are the following. Besides sex trafficking and labor trafficking, we also have domestic servitude, which is something that is absolutely rampant in South Africa. So domestic servitude is when a, a person comes across or is a domestic servant, whether a cleaner, a gardener, a, a cook, but they are living under very harsh circumstances. They are being either exploited, abused, or manipulated. And they are working for a ridiculous wage or they are working for no wage. Then we also have forced begging, which we, we see that that's a very big problem in our country. But in so many of those cases, those children and women, and sometimes men, are being forced to beg. If they don't go back to their traffickers, there is some form of punishment if they don't bring back money or food. Um, then we also have a situation called Bachabazi. Now, Bachabazi is what they call boy play. Boy play is when um, young boys are taken by older men for entertainment. They dance for the men and they provide um, so-called sexual pleasure. 
Then we also have forced illegal activity. Um, and this just shows you how human trafficking is intertwined in just about everything, all crimes that we see within mm. our country and globally. Mm. And then also, of course, we have um, uh, baby harvesting, organ harvesting, um, and in, in some cases, there's also snuff movies which for those who don't know, um, the person is trafficked and they are used um, for being um, uh, um, um, killed um, online um, on the dark web. Sure. So human trafficking has so many faces and it's very wide. Yeah, it's so, for that reason, it's so incredibly disturbing, isn't it? I mean, everything you've just, just outlined. Um, and it depends, I suppose, Tertia, on people not having any other alternative, of people having very little in terms of other options available to them, particularly the um, issues you've pointed out insofar as domestic servitude is concerned and forced begging. Yes. Yes, most definitely. I mean, th there are obviously so many aspects that can lead to a person being trafficked. And with human trafficking, what we have to remember is traffickers prey on people's vulnerabilities. So what is a vulnerability? It is unemployment um, or the, 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 the strong need for a man especially to, to take care of his family. Um, a vulnerability can be I'm heartbroken. Um, and I'm spilling the beans on social media and the traffickers are extremely active on the internet and social media. You know, if, 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 you, if you're a broken person and you are sharing with, with um, people you've befriended on social media and it's a stranger, you do not know who you're speaking to. Mm. Um, with social media, you can actually be anyone you want to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it can be a dream. Traffickers exploit people's dreams, like we've seen. Fake job offers, um, fake modeling contracts. Um, we've seen in South Africa specifically so many boys um, from rural areas that are lured um, into um, being trapped by a fake soccer contract. Sure. So sure. it is exploiting people's vulnerabilities and we all have to be careful because we, we all have vulnerabilities. Yeah. So we have to be, first of all, um, responsible online users and be very careful what we share online. Um, you know, when, when you take a photograph with your cell phone, um, I do it. It's fun. Um, the selfie thing is also such a such an in thing and a fun thing. Taking photographs of our children because we we're proud. It's their first day at school. Um, that photograph has so much metadata attached to it, especially if your location is on. If your location is on and you're taking photographs. That location can be hacked very easily, and the hacker does not have to be a experienced hacker. Um, often we give away so much, um, you know, personal information on on photographs, such as the badge on your child's um, school mm, uniform. Mm, mm. Give away what yeah. school they go to. Just the background of a photograph can give away a lot. So yeah. just need to be a bit more vigilant and careful what we share online as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, photographs of your home that may uh, well give away your address is another example. Uh, according to this report by this campaign, uh, Tertia, it, it focuses, as we said, uh, on Gauteng being a particular hotspot for human trafficking. There are particular recruitment areas that are listed in, in this report, but there are also areas listed as places where these victims are being held in Gauteng, Springs, Hillbrow, Randburg, Pretoria, Moraleta Park, Heidelberg as well. For, for, for you and the, the other organizations involved with this report, 
to come up with such a list. Does it mean that police as well are making headway in terms of cracking uh, cases involving human trafficking? I would say um, more specifically the Hawks. Yes, most definitely. The Hawks work very closely with organizations uh, such as us. Um, I'm specifically from uh, the Joseph movement. However, I am part of the National Freedom Network. But when it comes to our national human trafficking hotline, um, they are the main people we, that we need to contact as um, civil society when there's a problem when, or when you suspect any um, um, suspicious activity or when you're truly aware of a trafficking situation taking place. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they are the main people within South Africa to, to contact and because of all the intel and all the information that they receive um, and the contacts they have that work on the ground, including the Hawks, um, they would then um, gather all this data and information. But we do believe that a lot of headway is being made. However, we also see that there is a very big lack of education, unfortunately, when it comes to um, social workers and when it comes to SAPs. And I'm saying it with so much respect because I know that there are many of those people that work in those spheres that do absolutely incredible work. However, they still need more specific and focused education when it comes to human trafficking. Yeah, certainly. And yes, so... so some of our organizations do this. We have developed manuals and we encourage training um, for these um, professionals so that they are a lot more informed and, um, and more effective. Now, I also just want to say that we do know within all countries there, there is corruption. So that is why we want to encourage people to use the South Africa's National Human Trafficking Hotline. And in fact, Tisha, I, I, I've actually got that number here, and, and hopefully it is the right number. I've just uh, done a quick Google search of it. It's 0800-222-777. That is the SA National Human Trafficking Hotline. Uh, the, this group of NGOs joining forces to address the scourge of human trafficking in the country. We are told Gauteng is a particular hotspot. Tertia de Clark, let me thank you for your time this morning. The National Freedom Network is the organization Tertia is with. They're also involved in this campaign, the Traffic You Need to Know campaign.